Hey there, I'm Arbazi, and welcome to Dungeon of the Endless. So, Dungeon of the Endless is a game by Amplitude Studios, the makers of Endless Space and Endless Legend, but this is not another for a strategy game, this is a roguelite game. It does have some strategy elements, but in general it's a very fun game. I've been playing it a bit, so I figured I'll start a series and we'll see how it goes. I have no idea how much I'm going to play it, I guess that will at least partially depend on you. So, let's get started and start a new game. I will talk about the game mechanics and I will explain how the game works as I play, since this is the first part of a new series and of a game that I haven't played on the channel before. That's just a short opening scene. Okay, so when you first start the game, you can choose between two difficulty levels. There are more difficulty levels, but I do believe you have to finish the game at least once to unlock more than this. But these difficulty levels aren't actually easy. It's more like difficulty levels in FTL faster than light. Easy doesn't necessarily mean easy. We are going to play on easy because, come on, we won't play on too easy. Anyway, you can choose between quite a few different heroes to pick your team, which consists of two heroes. I don't really have any specific preferences, I'll just go with random. These all have slightly different stats, different passive abilities, different active abilities, but there's not much point talking about any specific active abilities when we didn't even start playing the game yet. So keep this on random, easy difficulty, and let's get started. This is just a short opening scene where we crash. Alright, so this is a bit of a mix between turn-based and real-time game. Because basically the way this works, when you open a door, like this one, or let's zoom out a little bit. What's the goal of the game? The goal of the game is to get to the next floor, basically. This is floor one as you can see in the bottom right corner. And by opening a door, we start a new turn, sort of. However, the game is real-time when we're fighting enemies. So we will enter in your room with both our heroes. I can bind them both to control one, like so. Now, we entered a new room, and the way this game works, there are quite a few things to talk about. First of all, we have the four resources that you might be familiar with if you played Endless Space or Endless Legend. So we have industry, which is used to build things like science generator, industry generator, or food generator. And this will generate more industry, more science, and more food, as you might have guessed. We also have science, which is used to unlock new things basically, and we have FOD, which is used to upgrade heroes, to heal heroes in combat, and any of these resources, or well, FOD and industry can both sometimes be used to trade with vendors, and we also have dust. Now, dust has one important use, which is to power rooms. We can power rooms with middle mouse click, like so, and that will use one slot. We will get more slots as we get more dust. You get one extra slot for each 10 dust. We will sometimes get dust by entering new rooms, killing things. So let's open the next door. And perhaps we'll get a little bit of dust here. Now, what about these generators that I talked just a moment ago? Some of the rooms will have slots like this, the big one. And this is where you can place generators. So I can place industry generator here, that will cost me 20 industry, like so, and it will generate extra industry every turn. Now every turn happens, every new turn happens when you open a door, as I already mentioned. So once I open the door, I won't only enter a new room, I will start a new turn, and I will generate all these things, and other things will happen. Some rooms are powered up without you having to use dust for it. So for example, this room is already powered up. I don't have to use dust for it. Alright, let's keep moving. There are quite a few things to talk about. 
but we need to explore a little bit more to actually get to that point. Now, I can use Ford to heal myself in combat, which I can do with these two options up here. I can also just go into the character screen and see that this will cost me three Ford or four Ford. It depends on how much damage you took. Here's another room, so we can power that up. You can sometimes find items in rooms. You can find science crystals, which is what you need to find if you want to unlock new items. Now, one more thing. There are some smaller slots in these rooms. And if you're wondering what these are all about, you can place defensive or offensive towers, sort of. Right now, the only thing we got access to is prisoner prod. Which is like a turret that will attack monsters that are moving through this room or into this room. There are quite a few offensive and defensive and support items that can go into these small slots. And this will be important once I explain a few more things about the game. So let's open a few more rooms. Eventually I'll run out of dust to power rooms, which is where the interesting stuff starts happening. But let's use our industry. No, we need 25. The cost goes up as we build more replicators and generators. We enter another room. So the goal of the game is to get to the next floor. But you don't just find the exit and then enter the next floor. Once you find the exit, anyway, I'll talk about that in just a moment. We found an item. So this is an item that gives us plus 5 defense and unlocks Team Spirit. We do have some slots for items. Every character has slightly different slots. So for example, this guy has a machine gun slot, armor slot and device slot. And this character has ceremonial sword slot, armor slot and device slot. Some characters can have two device slots. Anyway, let's use this then. So like that. And that's Team Spirit. Plus 15 defense if not alone in the room. Plus 15 attack power if not alone in the room. That's actually quite nice. I like that. Oh, I probably should have showed the passive abilities of our heroes. So this guy gets plus 6% attack power when their mates are nearby. So he works best if there's at least one more character in the room. Sometimes characters get penalized if there are other characters in the room, but not in case of these two. This one is plus 10% defense when grouped with others they trust. And we do have an active skill, which is plus 20% speed or plus 20 speed. And this guy has an active skill, which gives him extra attack power and extra speed. And it has two turn cooldown. So let's keep moving. And in order to explain the more interesting parts of the game, I need to get to the point where I won't have enough dust to power any more rooms. So, let's build the food replicator. I got 20 science. So that's enough to start researching something if we find a science crystal. We got more loot. Kitchen gloves added to your inventory. That's plus 8 attack power. Let's use those on this guy. Oh, that's actually a device. Right, okay. So let's replace this. And she can use the manual. Alright. Sounds good. Let's keep moving. And we got more loot. Wow, this is quite a lucky run so far. I never had free items from chests on the first floor. I don't know if I was lucky before. I don't know if I was unlucky before or if I'm getting very lucky now. Seems like I'm just getting lucky right now. Oh, minus 3 speed but plus 20 attack power. Alright, so now I don't have enough dust to power any more rooms. This is the interesting part because when I start a new turn by opening a door and entering a new room, I can get monsters not just in the room that I entered, but also in any unpowered rooms that I already discovered. So for example, if I leave these rooms unpowered, because let's say I just won't have enough power to get everything powered, 
I might get monsters spawning in this room. So that's actually quite important. However, they can't spawn in rooms that you did not discover. So it's actually quite important what order you open these doors in and how exactly you, you explore the dungeon. There is a strategy behind it. You don't just randomly open doors. You need to consider quite a few things. Anyway, let's open another one and go here. Also, monsters can destroy your generators and then you'll have to rebuild them. That's 31 industry. Let's build a science generator this time around. Okay, so once we find the exit, the actual goal is to pick up the crystal and then carry it to the exit. And once we pick up the crystal, monsters will start spawning in any rooms that are not powered. Here's the exit. Also, the person carrying the crystal will be very, very slow. So you can't just pick it up and brush to the exit. Don't have to worry about anything. And this is where defenses come in. Obviously, you can just trigger some monsters and then back up into a room with defenses. But setting up defenses can be quite important for the final part, where you are cutting the crystal. And before we actually start cutting the crystal, it definitely makes sense to finish exploring this floor. Any resources that you will have left at the end of a level of, or of a floor will be carried over to the next one. So you get to keep anything that you didn't use. Nail gun, wow, okay. I'm getting really lucky here, but I don't have another slot. I don't have any slots for this. Yeah, I don't have an actual slot that I can use this in. All right, that's fine. We had more than enough items. So let's finish exploring this floor. Okay, that's a bigger dude. Monster, whatever. Not much to see here. So get out of here. I will completely finish exploring the floor before I move on to the next one. Especially since things only get harder. And we got yet another item. That's really weird that I'm getting all these weapons and armor. That certainly didn't happen on my previous runs. I didn't have that many. Especially in such a short time period. Hey, can't complain about getting stuff, right? Okay, some more rooms on this side. Now, I might want to protect my generators. And the speed difference between these two people is just huge. Hmm. Once I pick up the crystal, I'll have to escort it through here. So let's set up a few turrets in this room. That seems like a pretty good idea to me. I only have prisoner pros, so I don't really have a big choice. There are quite a few interesting uh, turrets or systems that you can use in these slots. There are ones that can buff you up, for example, give you extra attack power. There are ones that can heal you as you kill monsters. There are defensive boss, and obviously there are better turrets. There are ones that do AoE damage, including to yourself. There are quite a lot. And you need to use science to unlock them. Alright. I could leave one dot back there, but I don't think that's going to be necessary. If I have to run back, I can run back very quickly. Yeah, the speed is pretty good even without the sprint ability or runaway ability. Oh, this is the science crystal so i can research something and we got more loot okay and yep also you can pause the game like so to think about your moves also some of the monsters will have different behavior than the others so some will be lined straight for your crystal down here and attack it and once your crystal starts getting attacked your dust level will drop the dust level is literally your crystal's health. Also, we might want to not get killed, maybe. 
That would generally be a good idea, I think. I can run out of the room and let this guy finish. You get healed at the end of each turn. Quote unquote turn. It's not really a turn, but you know what I mean. Once you kill every monster after triggering a new turn, you will get healed back to full. So there's one more door here. And that might be the last room. Let's go research something. We got 56 science. That's a lot of science. We can get a tactical HUD, which adds 18% attack power to all heroes on this floor. So, yeah. That's pretty good. That adds attack power to heroes on the entire floor, not just in the room. Adds 15% attack power to heroes in the same room. Okay. This one... Does medium damage to enemies in the room. And tear gas... Divides defense of monsters in the same room by two. This is pretty good against big scary monsters. With high defense. And applies a damage of 4 per second. I might go for the tactical HUD. I quite like that. Okay, let's go for that one. Why not? And keep moving. Yeah, this dude is so slow. Now, how do I want to... Wait. One more room. But who do I want to carry the crystal with? With the faster person, probably. Okay, so this is the last door. There's nothing else after this. And yes, we are getting things attacking us right here. I might have to use some food to heal myself also. I should have leveled up my heroes, but I didn't. I definitely will. You have to actually go into their character screen and use food to level them up. They won't level up on their own. You have to actually do it actively. And you use the same exact resource to level up and heal yourself in combat. Okay, we got healed up. That was actually quite close. So let's level up. Once you hover over the level up button, you will see what the exact effects will be. So I'll get plus 2 defense, plus 1 speed, plus 1 DPS, plus 1 attack power, plus 44 hit points. And the next level will give me one passive skill. Now, you don't know what exact passive skill is going to be, you just get shown that it's going to be a passive skill. Level up this guy, and this guy will also get a passive skill. I got 42 food. So, okay, let's level this guy. He's kind of slow, so he's going to have problems running away from dangerous situations. Okay, level him up. Food plus 0 0.2 food. Wait, what? Plus 0 0.2 food by kill monsters? Okay. So he gets 0 0.2 food from kill monsters, or... Did I understand that wrong? Alright, well, let's move on. Now, I need to think about how exactly to power this. I could power all the rooms all the way to the exit. I could also power everything here. So then I only have to worry about monsters coming through this exact room. And I already have turrets set up in there. So I like that plan. Let's actually send this guy here, and then I'll pick up the crystal with my other hero. Yeah, this dude is very slow, so having him closer to the exit seems like a pretty good idea. Alright, so let's pick up the crystal. You have to confirm it. You move slower with the crystal, so in this case it made sense to pick it up with the faster character, because this dude would be super slow. And I can use my active ability now to kill things faster. Definitely a good plan. So that's basically the game. It's a mix of tower defense, resource management, and you will be constantly starved on these resources. Which is a good thing, because you really need to think about what exactly to use them for and how to balance them. I like that part. There's a little bit of character progression, so some RPG elements, dungeon crawling. I quite like the game, it's fun. 
It's interesting. It's an interesting twist. But I'm going to continue this in the next part, so thanks for watching, and since this is the first episode of a new series, please consider leaving a like if you enjoyed it and would like to see more, and I'll see you again soon.